Hi everyone, Laura Cornish here. Welcome to my weekly video blog, where this week I'll be focusing on not only an exciting site visit that I had the opportunity to see, but also last week's big news, what our mining minister had to say about the implementation of Mining Charter 3. Before I delve into the Mining Charter, let me share with you my exclusive site visit opportunity this week, which took me to Cromtech's newest tailings retreatment plant near Lonman's Marikana operation. This is an impressive feat, reprocessing PGM material to extract high quality chrome at an average rate of 300,000 tons per month. Within the tailings space, this is a significant size. This plant is an incredible feat and definitely deserves recognition from our industry. Technology partner Multitech was responsible for the delivery of over 200 spirals for the plant, which is the heart of the operation. Thanks to both companies for hosting me on site and be sure to look out for the full article in the November edition of Mining Review Africa. Site visit aside, last week was a big week for the South African mining industry. Minister Mantashi briefed the media on the latest developments with Mining Charter 3. Here is some live coverage from the event where the Minister outlines the importance of the Charter and how employee schemes should deliver value. The Charter is an important contributory element to the efforts aimed at stimulating the economy. It aims to create regulatory certainty, sustainable growth and competitive and transformed industry. It is important uh, to South Africa Realizing her long term objective of eliminating poverty, reducing inequality, and creating jobs. Coupled with this is the withdrawal of the MPRPA Amendment Bill from Parliament, uh, which is another step towards creating a regulatory and policy settlement. Employee shareholder schemes with experiences, ESCOM is but one, session is another. There are quite a few experiences of ESOPs, how they are managed. It is not the share value that is transferred, it is the dividend. Because if you distribute share value, you give it away. You are actually removing that shareholder from being a shareholder. What is actually distributed is dividends uh, based on the performance of the company. Having reviewed the key charter components, I'm largely impressed. The document is fair and from what I can tell across social media platforms, everyone agrees. However, we do need to see the theory put into practice. So what are the key takeaway points from Mining Charter 3? The once empowered, always empowered rule stays, but hear it for yourselves. For investment, an existing mining right holder who achieved the minimum of 26% including right holder whose BE partner have since exited, uh, is recognized as compliant for the duration of the rights. There are incentives for local beneficiation, local procurement, and 70% of investment into R&D must be for South African organizations. Compliance will be monitored yearly, and community trusts must incorporate a community decision maker's involvement. So all in all, a positive result for our industry, and hopefully one that we can move forward with in a positive manner. But there is much more to the Charter than I've outlined, so visit our website for more details on unpacking Mining Charter 3. I'd also like to hear what you think. Is it a yay or a nay? So drop me a line. And on that note, I look forward to hearing from you. See you again soon.